Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and welcome to 2024, and welcome to a very wet and bitterly cold Wales. I think the damp is getting into my bones, I can tell you. So, just like many other creative people, artists, crafters, pretty much most people, I would imagine, at the beginning of the year, we're all doing the same thing. We're looking around going, oh, I need to finish that up. No, I have to tidy that. No, I need to declutter that. And I need to get rid of that. And I'm no different to anyone else. I do exactly the same thing. And this caught my eye. Now, this little basket stays on a shelf in my studio here. And what it is, it's a basket where all of the spare pieces of napkin go. Now, I have three drawers full of napkins because I really like using napkins. However, I don't put, if I, like, okay, let's pull this piece out. If this piece has been torn off a napkin, I'm not going to put it back in the drawer of good napkins. I'm I keep it in this separate bag. And then when I'm working on stuff, I, I will first look at these before I look at the drawers. Um, also, in this box... When when my videos are uploading or I've got some time where I'm waiting for something to dry, I will basically stick the napkins to backgrounds like that's, that's just a bit of manila card by the looks of it. This was, I'd say that was a 12 by 12 that I must have gel printed on. I remember this one. This was a pocket that was sent to me as part of a swap. Um, this was just plain, that feels like file folder to me. Again, a, a bit of a gel print, maybe. These two are obviously gel prints onto the recycled 12 by 12. A um, couple of guest checks, not sure what I'll do with them. Um, oh, oh, there you go. There's some time cards there. And what I do is I stick stick the stuff onto here, basically so I don't end up losing the scraps but then i'll periodically pick this up and i'll go through this lot and go right what needs doing like i'll pick that up and go right do i need to put that onto a piece of card it becomes a journal card or does it get fold up and slipped into a little envelope so oh, excuse me so um but i've been a bit lazy about it i've been so busy i haven't actually done much of this so um maybe that's for another day to look at that but i had an idea um and I don't know that I've really done this before. I may have done this. It's been a long time if I have. Um, I have this bit of recycled um, 12 by 12. And I stuck book page to it. And I've got probably about eight or nine pieces like this where periodically I'll pull out, pull out one of those unwanted 12 by 12s. And I'll just stick book page on it. Because that gives me a neutral background. I could cut this up as I treat it as I would a master board cut it up and make it into something else but i thought let's go these sleeves are annoying me so i thought right let's try and do something else i'm going to come in and i'm going to use bits of napkin on here and see if i can make this into an interesting 12 by 12 and then potentially cut it up and we'll see what we can make from it um and maybe decorate a few pieces further and i was thinking right um i'd like to stick with floral type stuff so let's pull anything that looks vaguely floral and please don't ask me where i got the napkins from i've been collecting napkins for years um and tissue paper i thought one that won't work for me i don't want bunnies in it i've already pulled that one out um and i have no idea i forgot i had those and i have no idea where the majority of these came from as you can see i i have pieces of similar ones all over the place right but I'm just trying to pull out some floral ones um whenever I'm out shopping if ever I see napkins I always take a look at them um there was a store I don't even know whether the store still exists in the states called Bed Bath and Beyond and I used to get a lot of my napkins from there when I lived over there that might be useful I don't want that um, have a bit of that. Uh, this one's a bit too compact. It's just a flower on its own. Um, so yeah, so and also um I have swapped napkins with people in the past where because you buy you buy a pack of napkins and you end up with like 20 napkins when really you only wanted the one. I might leave that one to one side. Mm, no. 
I'm looking for things that are just slightly more delicate, right? There's quite a bit of that. Right, there's one already with its backing off, so let's take that one out of there. Oh, this is the one I did that B background with. So not, not for this one though. And little scraps like this can be useful. Pieces like that. It's just a way on, that's just some of the backing. So right, this lot can go back in the bag. Um, so yeah, um, I have periodically swapped napkins with people that I know. Um, basically, if there's 20 napkins in a pack, I'm likely to only ever use three. Um, and I'll have all the rest of them there. So I sometimes send them out in happy mail or when I do a swap, I'll send stuff out. But anyway, we're just going to build a masterboard. Let's let's just say masterboard because I think we'll, we should be familiar with what a masterboard is. And if you're a newbie, a newbie is a masterboard. It doesn't have to be 12 by 12. It can be any shape or size. Um, basically, you just stick elements to it, and then once it's complete and you're happy with the way it looks, you can cut it up into journal cards, journal tags, you can make belly bands, you can do tuck spots. Basically, it's a way of making your own, um, like, craft card, um, your own unique background. So, right, so I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to pull in pieces of this. Um, we're going to stick it down. Now I'm going to make sure I don't go um, sticking too large pieces down because I know I'm going to be cutting this up. So although I love the rows, I'm probably not going to be able to get the bottom half in unless I actually do it as um, a long, large tag. I'm not going to cut these up blind. Blind means I cut it up from the back and I don't see what the front is. And obviously I do have to put writing surface on the back if they're not going to be pockets. Now, most most napkins have different plies. And by plies, it means how many layers of tissue. This one, I believe that's it, doesn't it? Let's see. If I'm... Yeah, this is, this must have been three ply and I've already taken one ply off the back. So let's just take these off. Now, I tend to do it just by moistening my fingers slightly. And I've got a damp cloth here. And I just basically do this with my fingers. So I do it on this one. And then I press them together and pull them apart. And as you can see, they, they will pull the backing off. Right, we're not using that one anyway, because we've just done this one. You can do it also with a little bit of tape. Let's see if I can find the tape. This is a trick I learned off Gail Agostinelli. I now need to find a napkin that's got a backing on it, however. Right, bear with me, I need to find one. Right, this feels as if it's got backing on it. And what Gail, Gail does is she gets, gets a bit of tape. I've done this with washi tape before in the past. And you press it onto the surface and then as you pull it up, it exposes and pulls up. Now this might have two plies because that doesn't look transparent enough. So if you do it again and pull, there you go. So then you end up with just the one ply. Now it'll depend on the quality of the napkin as to whether it's got one ply, two ply, three ply. Oh, I don't want to fold that up with a bit of sticky tape in it. Right. I'm keeping the backings. Um, they can be used for several things and I will share with you what I'm going to use them for as we go along. Right. I'm just going to make a little pile of things over here. Um, whether I use everything we're pulling off, I do not know. Um, but they're options, aren't they? Right. On second thought, I'm not liking that. That looks a bit painty and it doesn't tend to go with this group. That does. Again, not convinced on that one. This one intrigues me. But I think I'm going to save it for something else because although it would look nice on there, it would also look a little bit lost on there. Um... This looks really transparent. That would almost disappear on there, so that's not going to be used. Right, we've already got a piece of that. Might use a piece of that. And that's got some butterflies on it, so who doesn't like a butterfly? So my aim is, and there's two pieces, to just use a regular glue stick for this process. Um, and also I'm going to be using, in this country it's called cling film. Um, you may know it's plastic wrap, you may know it's ceram wrap. 
anyone who's seen me doing collage work with tissue or napkin will actually know that I do this process quite a lot. So you're probably going to be familiar with this. Right, so let's pull in. Where's that rose gone that I peeled off the first time on? So, right, so I've got the rose. Now, I think this is probably going to become a reasonably large journal card. So I might want to put it up there. So I'm going to pull in just a piece of something to protect my mat. It could be anything. Um, people have asked me about this, by the way. I originally bought my ones. It was a Tim Holtz. I think it's called a heat resistant mat or something like that. But if you go to your grocery store, sometimes you will find um, they have these sort of mats for baking cookies and stuff on. So you can always find them, them there. But basically, this could even be a spare piece of paper. So I'm going to be reasonably generous with my glue stick. And I'm going to try and get roughly this shape onto the surface. Now, it's going to eat up my glue stick a bit. Because obviously, this is overlapping book page. So... The other reason I quite like using a glue stick is the glue will dry. Um, the bits that are still exposed to the air will actually dry without being sticky. So they'll just go back to normal. Big dot of glue on my finger. Come and pick you up. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to line this up down the side. Now, I don't want to press that down just yet. Just gently running my finger over it to get it kind of in place and then I'm going to take my piece of plastic wrap over the top and this prevents me damaging underneath. I've got one of the pieces that I took off the back and I'm just going to burnish it down. I'm not really pummeling it, I'm just using this to smooth out any air bubbles because if I was to rub directly on the clean, um, on the napkin I, I would end up tearing the napkin, but what this does is it gets rid of all of the air bubbles, as long as there's glue under the napkin. Gets rid of all of the air bubbles, peel that off, and puts it fully in contact with the surface, as you can see. Now, that means this is going to be slightly sticky, because pushing it down has forced the glue up through the napkin. So be aware of that. Also, the piece of plastic you've used will have, I don't know if you're even going to see that. You might be able to see it. There's a thin film of glue on there. So be really careful if you keep reusing the same piece of plastic wrap, you could end up gluing something down on top. Right. This is a cute piece. Let's Put it somewhere where it's going to be seen. So, so this is just a fun way, basically, of using up bits of napkin, I feel. Um, as I said, I don't know that I've done, done this as a, um, a master board before. I know that I use napkins a lot. I know I usually glue them to book pages, a bit like the one I've got here. Um, I just like using them. They're real, they're real fun. One thing I will mention at this point is if you are gluing the napkins onto a background like we are here, do not think of running your glue stick over an existing stuck piece because it will just roll up the napkin and you'll end up tearing it. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious of which bits of this plastic wrap I use. And um, Plastic wrap is really inexpensive, so I would rather not take the risk of pulling the napkin up and just getting myself a new piece of ceram wrap or plastic wrap because I can see that's already getting sticky. I mean, there's dry areas here. So if I keep an eye on it, but I wouldn't use the same piece for the whole thing. Right, so I've got that on there. Um, let's put a bit of colour in here now. Right, I quite like this one. It's got a corner to it. Now, I'm tearing these by holding my finger and thumb together and just tearing them. You can come in with a slightly wet paintbrush, paint around the outline of whatever it is you want. And what will happen is the moisture will soften the tissue of the napkin so you can just tear it apart. Um, 
Now I'm not doing that because I'm quite quite happy to just be doing it by hand. So let's see where we're at with this. So all the way over to about number 39, I think that was. So, so I hope you all had a nice December. I hope your new year will be fabulous for you. Um, I believe this year is going to be when the Chinese New Year comes in. I believe it's the year of the dragon. I love dragons, so I'm more than happy with that as an outcome. Um, I don't know when the New Year for Chinese New Year is, actually. I used to know that, and I, I must have forgotten it along the way, or I haven't put it in my planner, or I haven't got it recorded anywhere, anywhere. Now, if I've got slight variation where the napkin's not gone to the bottom, I'm probably not going to worry because I will naturally be trimming this as I cut it. I'm going to be really careful because this is getting really sticky. Actually, let's just not take the risk. Let's just get a new piece of plastic wrap. Um, yeah, when I cut it, I'll probably end up trimming the edges slightly anyway. And besides that, um, there's a good chance I'll be inking around the edges. So if, if the design just slightly misses the edge, not overly worried. Nothing that can't be fixed. Let's peel that back. So as you can see, we're getting really nice results here with the effects we've got going on. It's right. getting a little bit sticky for my liking. Let's just wipe that off with a damp cloth. Turn it over so the, the wet is on the downside. Right, let's, are you okay? So I'm moving stuff around a lot, I apologize. Right, I'm going to save the butterfly pieces for later. Um, I quite liked this piece, didn't I? Let's just tear that out of there a bit. So yes, so the new year is upon us. Um, well, it is if you don't celebrate the Chinese New Year. As I said, I don't remember when that is. Um, so new year is upon us, which is fun. Um, fresh starts for lots of people. Um, I had a reasonably quiet New Year's Eve, but then I really don't do that much on New Year's Eve anymore. I used to be the person who always went out and we had traditions in my household of like you would open the back door to let the old year out. You'd open the front door to let the new year in. All this would happen at midnight, by the way. Um, I kind of what we used to do something with a piece of coal as well. I think you had to bring a piece of coal into the house um, at midnight as well to... I think it was something to do with posterity or to keep your house warm for the whole year. It was well, it was all symbolism, let's put it that way. Right, that looks quite cute. Now, because yellow and purple are complementary, I'm going to try and put that there. Now, I'm going to really be careful I don't go over the edge of the piece I've already got stuck down. Because, as I said, it's likely to roll up. Um, so, yes, we had traditions like that. And then, obviously, you're all supposed to sing Old Lang Syne um, at midnight. Um, I can't say I ever knew all of the words. I sort of knew the chorus and that, that was about it. It's uh, a Scottish melody, I believe. Let's pop you down there. Now, if there are any bits that are not stuck down... What I do is I wait till the piece is completely dry and then I just pull those pieces off. And what will happen is when it comes to the edge where it's glued, it will just tear away because the glued section will be stronger than the napkin section. Like, I mean, I'm going to show you here, but it's the wrong thing to do. But this piece would tear before the piece that's on on the stuck to the surface you see i haven't made a video for a couple of days can't you i've lost the will to speak so right, that's nice there now you could come in with stamping you could do other things i'm beginning to be aware that as i'm handling it 
bits of this are sticky, so I've got to be cautious of that. Right, that's another bit of butterfly. I should sort of put the napkin butterflies to one side, I think. I'll put that up there, or else I'm going to forget about them. I don't want to forget about the butterflies. So, um, thank you for all of you who have been very complimentary about the um, Atlantis Warrior Mask series that I put out there. Um, yes, it was hard work, but it was well worth it. I really enjoyed it. You all seem to be loving it. And, um, and that's what it was about. It was about you guys enjoying a longer project from me. And this year, there are going to be longer projects from me. I, I really enjoyed doing that. Um, as I said in the videos, I think the thing is that they're going to be more than one video in length, but just by the sheer nature of trying to do a longer project. Um, but you don't have to sit through the whole thing, guys. Watch it at your own pace or not watch it at all or skip forward and see maybe just the last last video. So you guys get to see the end result. I mean, I try to edit out anything in the video that's pretty much boring um, because if I wouldn't watch it I wouldn't expect you to watch it so I try to do that however the process in itself is a long-winded process but as I say time and time again to anybody you control the buttons it's up to you to decide what you watch how much you watch when you pause it, when you come back the next day, whether you watch it on double speed. I know some people do that. I mean, I've been known to do that when I watch other people's videos. Sometimes I'll watch it at double speed. Um, it does sound like you've got a, chimp monk, a chipmunk in the background. But a lot of the time that doesn't bother me because I'll just put it on mute. Because I, unless they're doing a technique that I've never, ever seen before, I can usually guess about now. What, what people are doing on the screen. Right. So you have trouble with this plastic wrap and napkins. Everything is light and everything just flies around. Right, we're getting there. Right. This area obviously needs some attention. I'm wondering whether I can get away with putting that in there. Maybe let's just take this piece out of here. Um, I am working my way through comments, by the way. Um, just before Christmas, I want to say it was just before Christmas, I got to the point where I would say I'd answered almost 99% of the years, the years, um, and that goes there, that'll be quite nice, um, and with the years comments. But if you saw any of my updates, you will know that I had in excess of 12,000 comments last year. So I try to keep up, but social media tends to be my worst enemy in that it sucks the life out of my day. I end up losing so much time that I'm supposed to be working on other things. And what am I doing? I'm on Facebook or I'm on YouTube or and they're, all, they're all part and parcel of my business. I totally agree. However, sometimes I'll look down and go, oh, my goodness, what the heck is the time? And I haven't realised that Pinterest, Pinterest is one of my worst enemies. I love Pinterest. Um, I find that there's lots and lots of inspirational stuff on Pinterest. Um for multiple interests of mine. So, but the thing is, I can quite easily lose an entire afternoon because I've been looking on Pinterest for like six hours and not even realised that I've been on there that long. Okay, I'm liking this. It's getting there. Um, I don't want it to be completely masked with all of the flowers. I want to leave spaces because if and when I, not if, when I cut this up, I want to be able to come in and actually put in maybe labels or numbers or words or things like that. 
So I want to make sure I leave some space for that. I'm right? just rescuing these couple of butterflies from a scrap. I mean, obviously, you can get a bit obsessive with keeping scraps. Um, I know quite a few people who have a scrap issue. And I shall not point, point at anyone because I can have a scrap issue as well. Right. Now, just in case you're thinking the light is a little bit weird here, maybe you see a shadow of mine passing over the, the surface. It's pretty much because it's so dark here. I've had to put the electric light on in my studio. Not normally what I like to do. I'm, I'm not keen on having the light on in here because it tends to... Um, it gives a false a falseness to the colours that um, I'm working with. So I tend to not have the electric light on. But there comes a point it's either the electric light on or... I'm not able to make a video so um, let's just bear with me and as I said if you do see a little bit of a an overlaying of like a yellowy shadow as I'm moving around that's the reason why so the light however is behind me so my body should in realistic terms be covering up the fat that it's on but it does mean it bounces the light around so I can see other stuff. Right, let's take that out of there. Right, this plastic is getting sticky. Right, I'm just coming in now with some butterflies just to finish this off. And then I will stop the video because I've got to wait for this to fully dry. Because if I try and cut it when it's still wet, it's, it's going to be the devil's own job, to be honest. Right, this little butterfly looks like fun. Actually, I've torn part of him. I could stick him back together, but if I look here, I've already got another butterfly. Let's put you in there. Now, I'm not overly worried about this line here. I can come in like this and just tear pieces of it, but you'll find as you're looking down, you will probably not see very many straight lines when you use tissue um, or napkin because it will just blend into the background. Right, so I think I need that piece in there. Um, I am reasonably liberal with my um, glue stick. Um, I have never ever had a problem with tissue coming back off when I've used a glue stick, but that doesn't mean it may not if you have a different brand. I just need a bit more glue down there. Um, if you have a different brand than me. Um, but you may have a different version that is superior to mine. And I, I often get asked, Kerry, what glues do you recommend? What glue stick do you like to use? Um, it's very hard to say because um, glue is one of those things that is affected by the atmosphere in which you live. So it could be that what works here, say, wouldn't work in Florida because it's a lot more humid than here. Um, it could be that something that works here, uh, sorry, doesn't work here, may work beautifully in another country. Actually, that butterfly's just a little bit too much on there. Um, so just be aware that I would say, first of all, if you follow any creative people in your area like it that you know live in in your county your state your district wh where whatever it is in the country that you live in um check out what they're using um then if you can't find anything that way that you find satisfactory maybe you just need to periodically change loose until you find one that absolutely works for you perfectly. I think that's not far off. I do feel this needs something and I wanted to put this one on. The trouble is it's got that line through it and I don't necessarily want the line. Did I have another butterfly? I will put something down here. Actually not necessarily butterflies. I said there's something I can harvest out of here. 
Well, if I hadn't ripped the R off the fleur, I'd put fleur across there. Oh, actually, I have got a piece. Let's tidy that up. Remember, guys, this is a background. If I take that piece off there. So my intent is that things should be stuck over the top of it. Obviously, after drying time. Right, let's get some glue into here. Being very wary of that butterfly there because I haven't long stuck him down. Now I don't mind if the whole thing goes on or not. I would like it relatively straight, however. It's really hard because I'm looking for an iPad, so I can't always determine whether things are straight or not. So I'm going to leave this, I say, probably for about an hour. I'm going to go and grab myself some lunch, to be honest with you. I'm going to come back and hopefully in that time, this would have all dried. And then we'll take it from there. So here I'm back again. It's been about an hour, probably not quite an hour, but it feels dry enough to me. If I had any concerns, I could always just hit it with a hairdryer. But whenever I'm using napkin, I usually leave it at least an hour or two, preferably overnight, to be honest, let it fully dry through. So let's go on to the next step. So I've got my guillotine. I'm using a guillotine because I just prefer to use a guillotine. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to just trim the edges of these um, with a guillotine. Now, the reason I'm trimming the edges is purely because it'll give me a nice clean edge to work with. It doesn't concern me that I'm making this less than a 12 by 12. And the reason for that is that it's not going to be um, a journal cover or anything. So it doesn't really matter what size it is to start with. I just like, I like to, it's just faster to actually just trim it with a trimmer or a guillotine than it is to actually just try and cut all of the individual bits with the scissors. Now, we've got our 12 by 12. Now I could just put that in a box and leave it for another day whenever, say I was doing a floral journal or maybe a vintage journal that I wanted flower accents in. And I could just keep this. I could probably spend the rest of the day just making these up and storing them for later. But as this is a video, we're going to try and do something with it. Now, needless to say, the back is not a writing surface yet. And I've chosen not to stick any writing surface on there because some of these may become pockets. If they become pockets, you never write on the back of the pocket. But what I'll do is once we've decided what the elements are, then I'll come in after we finish filming because you seriously don't need to see me sticking coffee dyed paper and just um, neutral papers on the background. So looking at this, I wanted to keep the integrity of that rose. So I'm probably going to cut along here. As I said, I don't have a specific journal or specific need for this. So I'm literally going to just make up the measurements as I come along. So, and the good thing is it actually ended up there and there, which is quite good. Right, I did like this as a journal card. Now if I cut it, are you in shot? No, you're not in shot. Sorry, I had a feeling you weren't in shot. Now, looking down here, so to use this as a straight line, if I want to save the end of this leaf, I'm going to cut a butterfly in half. If I cut it there and cut the leaf, it actually doesn't matter that this little bit's on the next piece. So I'm literally going to come in and I'm going to purposely just have this as the rose. As you can see, I cut it close to that, but it doesn't matter if that leaf's going off the edge because this is also going off the edge, so is that. We'll work on these once we've cut them all. This, however, means that that leaf makes sense and it depends now where I want to cut this. Now, the question is, do I want it to be a journal card or a tag? And what I'm looking at, see if I can use this again, is if I cut down here, I can cut that into a tag and it's quite a nice looking tag and we put a label or something there. If, however, I come this far over, it looks like a journal card. So I think we're going to make this into a tag. Cut between. 
So I've cut between those two tulips, which means there's going to be a focal point on there and I'm going to cut the corners. I knew there was going to be a focal point on there anyway. Now I could come in again and do another tag. Probably do a wider tag. If I did a wider tag, actually let's do that. Let's cut down the side of the hydrangea. So that's a narrow tag and it's a really quite a neutral one. And that's another tag if I snip the corners off. So, so we've got those, all of those, that's a journal card. Those are tags, right? Let's look at this one. Right now, this feels it needs to be that way up, but it could easily be this way up. So I think if I come in, That might end up being a pocket. Let me just get a punch. Right, the reason I wanted to get some punches was because as soon as I punch something, it then helps me understand what it is. Now, this has got a line along the top. I don't mind that. I'm going to turn this into a pocket. How wide is this? I just thought, how wide are my journal pages? Five and a bit. That should be fine, actually. Right, come in roughly in the middle. Oops. So that tells me that's now a pocket. I could put something there and I could put something there. We'll look at that in a minute. Right, I wonder, pity I've got words on there because I would. This looks like a really nice journal card. So let's come down between the butterflies and that look good together. That could be a pocket as well, couldn't it? It's like straight to me. Sorry, just having a bit of a housekeeping moment. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but whenever I cut something, even though I'm using the guillotine, sometimes I feel it's not completely squared. Now these are upside down. If I turn it that way, they're the right way up, but does it 100% matter? I like it this way. Maybe we'll put a label or something in there. So let's put a bigger notch in this one. Okay. Well, it would have been good if that had been anywhere near the centre. Let's see if I can move it over slightly. That's a bit better. It's going to annoy me now. I'm going to have to take that bit off there. That's near enough. We're not striving for perfection here. Right, let's get rid of the chomper. And let's see where we're at with these, right. Let's take the garbage to one side. So I've got a pocket, a journal card. I like to round the corners on journal cards um, purely because if I round the corners, they're not likely to get stuck on something when I actually put them into a pocket. So that's a journal card. This was a pocket. Some people round the upper pocket, some people round uh, corners, some people round the bottom corners. That's that's a personal choice. That was a tag, that was a tag, that was a tag. This was a journal card, so that's around around the corners on this. Um I don't have a brand for these punches I'm using, guys. I would just say Go on to the internet, um, maybe eBay or Amazon, and just search or search corner rounders or craft punches, corner rounds, something like that. And you, will, you they will probably come up. They're very popular. They're out there. Right, I'm going to be quite lazy and I'm going to use um, this to do the corners on my tags purely for speed. I can see they'll be picking pieces up off my carpet for the next couple of days, aren't I? Now, likewise, you can round the bottom corners of your tags if you choose. Right, that lot can go to one side. It's a bit of a clean up here. So let's start with this one. I don't feel this needs a lot. 
I think this might need a label of some sort. And I've got Tracy Fox labels here, and I really like Tracy Fox's labels. Tracy Fox, that's nice, just by there. Um, and I've got some vintage photo here as well. Um, the Distress Inc. Um, has wonderful digital. She has a shop called Love Junk Journals on Etsy. I have lots of her digital label kits. I've got a few other kits of hers as well, but the label ones I use so often. And it's wonderful having a digital you can just print and print and print again. Um, and she just makes lovely labels. So, right, so put that there. I don't mind leaving it blank. It doesn't need to be written in. Right, I do have some stamped elements as well. So basically these are just the edges I've taken off books and things like that and I've just stamped them. That was so not the right thing. Come on, I can't pick it up. Identification, identification check, but I'm not sure that feels right. Correspondence order. I like putting labels sideways. I don't, I don't know. I didn't quite like the identifiers. I use this one quite often. So I just get a little bit down the edge of there. This is a really, really fragile piece of book page. Um, half the time when I put the glue on it, I end up ripping it. Oh, and I didn't do it that time, thank goodness. Now, I am covering... Oh, there you go. So, I won't put that one on there. I know I could probably rescue it, but we're not going to try and rescue that. I'll just see if I've got another one. Yes, I do. There you go. And this one, this one is less fragile, hopefully. Just a little bit along the edge there. All right, let's try this again, shall we? Disadvantage of using um, vintage book pages is their fragility. Advantage of using vintage book pages is their beauty. I know I'm putting this directly over the word rose, but seriously, does anyone need to be told that's a rose? Right, I've got two elements on there. I think I'd like one more element on here somewhere, and I'm feeling a number of some sort. So I've got a box of numbers. Some of these, are actually all of these, I think, are stamped stamped or taken out of books or things like that. I don't want a big number. I don't mind overlapping numbers as well. It could be that it doesn't need a number, but I think it does. I think I'm going to put that right by there. That's just a little bit of ink around the edge. I'm inking around the edges of things is completely a personal option. It's up to you entirely whether you do them or not, whether it's your style or not, whether you like that look or not. And I'm using um, Vintage Photo, which is a colour. You can use whatever colour that is your thing, should we say. I think I'm going to put that up slightly. Let's see if I can see that on the edge. Right, and a little bit of ink around the edge. I use the ink around the edge basically just to frame things out. And that's that's a phrase I learned from Gail Agustinelli, framing it out. And it's funny because then about a year later, I heard Tim Holt saying, oh, frame it out. And I'm like, hmm, Tim, is that your word? Or did you get that off Gail Agustinelli without knowing? Or did you just both come up with it at the same time, right? That's sticky and getting on my nerves. Right, we'll look at them all later. Let's put that to one side. Numbers can go back to whence they came. So, right, let's do this one. Right, this is pretty much the same. It needs something big there. And I think probably a round down there. Right, these are just generic, generic things that either have come in happy mail or cash book. That doesn't seem the right thing. Um, have come in happy mail or when I've done a journal swap, um, a journal swap, um, done a swap of some sort with somebody sometimes and I do the same thing if I'm doing a swap I will actually send someone a few extras as we go along and and that's how I think that's how we all tend to add to and build up our ephemera stashes and stuff like that 
So that's probably where a lot of these labels came from. Um, but then I've been crafting and being an artist for a very long time. So I have no idea where a lot of these come from. Lynchburg VA. Lynchburg VA is VA Virginia. Is VA Virginia? It might be Virginia. I don't know. I'm going to put it on here anyway because I like the colours of it. Um, I might then put a number on. As you can see, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. I tend to like similar things. I, I usually put three elements on, or five, or seven, or sometimes I get completely carried away. But I do think I want something with a bit of colour. As you can see, the green would be nice. I just don't like that sticker. Um, ash. I don't think I want the word ash on there. Julienne. I, I wanted something round, didn't I? I thought I wanted something round. Not that. That's just boring. Let's go back over this side, see if there's anything. I don't even mind an, a shape. I think I need to go back to Tracy Fox. Tracy's bound to have something. Actually, wait a minute, there's another box of elements here. I just call these things elements. I don't know what they're supposed to be called. I don't know whether they've got specific names. I just call them elements. Ooh, I would have thought white would have been a refreshing change, but it's just too, it's too white. Now, of course, I could always come in and punch a circle out of something. What's that there? I don't mind that. I like this squirrely bit in there. So I would always say, guys, um, if you have a chance to build up your stash of things, do it. And by that, I mean things like this a little bit. Why do I feel this might be a sticker? Is it a sticker? It feels like a sticker. It is a sticker. I didn't even know I owned these. That's a disadvantage of having too many things. It's also a disadvantage when you don't have nails. Come on, Griffiths. You can do it. And, and we've got it. Right, I normally don't trust stickers, but this one feels quite sticky. So I think I'm going to trust the universe and fingers crossed that stays down. Right, as I said, these are going to be backed later on. I'll back them with coffee dyed paper or neutral papers. Um, the neutral papers don't need to be coffee dyed in colour because of this colouring here. I might even put a pale pink on the back of there. So that's another one done. I'm going to do it for time. We've got time to do a few more. Uh, this one I think is going to be quite quick. I think this just needs something down there and maybe a little something there. Um, I've got some stamped phrases here. What's this one? So proud of you, my brave, strong, amazing friend. That's lovely, but I don't know who you are. Um, an unhurried sense of time is in itself a form of wealth. Bonnie Friedman. There you go, Bonnie. I think you are perfect for this pocket. So, yeah, I do enjoy using little elements like this and I harvest them from lots of places. I do have a few digitals that I use. Um, I will also, if I'm at a craft show or an art fair, I will always look around to see if there's like ephemera packs on sale, the sort you could potentially get from um, Etsy. Sometimes if I'm running low on, on elements, I will actually go to Etsy and just buy a pack to support those artists there. Um, I just think it's fine. I mean, I, I have no problem Oh, look, I even stamped onto tissue. I could have used that. Um, I have no problem with using stuff. I feel I want a number there. Just rattling on here. 
Let's see, it's not like quite a long one. I'm not sure I've got very many long numbers in here. That's relatively long. Let's let's put him on there. As I said, I would normally have three things on here. You don't need to, but you can. I mean, I could just come in and put a little butterfly on this. Actually, have I got any of those little butterflies left? I might have. Bear with me a second, so I'll stick this on here. Right, I did a review on small butterflies. Where were they? Right, this, this is by a company called Katie Sue Designs. They had, um, these double-sided die-cut butterflies, and I really like them. So let's see if there's anything in here. I use these so often. Um, and the set comes in a pale and a bright. Like, I, I can't remember how many hundred you get. Does that look wrong? That feels wrong. That doesn't quite look right. It's the only trouble when you've got too much choice, you never know which one to choose. A little purple one. Let's just put a little purple one. Right, I'm going to use Art Glitter Glue on this because it's it's not so much cardstock, but it is ever so slightly glossy. Well, I wouldn't even say glossy. I would say it's more like a satin finish. Let's put you by there. Right, that might get something more when it, it finds which journal it's going to go into because it might end up with a little bit of lace here. It might end up with like a button cluster or something. And we don't need to start me pulling button clusters out at this moment because goodness knows we'll never get this finished within an hour. Right, I picked that up. Um, a lot of my ephemera I never consider finished until I add it to the journal. And the reason for that is, it when I put a piece of ephemera, we'll look at all of these at the end, by the way. When I put a piece of ephemera into a journal, I want it to reflect the characteristics of the journal. And that, that could be as simple as literally just taking an element from, say, a digital kit or something, or the papers that I've used, and in they go. Right. I was looking for something with a little bit of a pop. That's nice. I like that. Don't know what it means. Esprit de... Is that a V? Verivine spirit of something obviously my french is absolutely appalling i think that was french um is absolutely appalling um i did used to speak it at one point back in my school days which is a long time ago people right i've got a feeling i want something there pity that's can i cut that off i could cut that off there Save the little bit that I cut off. I think that will work. Put that up there. I mean, I could have used a postage stamp as well. I mean, I do like using postage stamps in my ephemera, like the regular, real, everyday run of the mill postage stamps. Um, I tend to, I've got a big box of them and I tend to use them all the time. Um, they're a great way of adding a splash of colour. You can tell I've got a, a new ink pad, can't you? I'm not used to it being this dark yet. Right, let's frame that out. Under that needs something there. No, let's leave that. Maybe it'll have a, a lace, excuse me, a lace piece or something. Right, so I've got these. 
Now, I don't think this needs much. It needs something in here, but I really don't think it needs much at all. What's this? So I'm trying to find out what these are. Actually, I don't mind that. Where's this from? That might be a Tim Holtz stamp that I've stamped onto a bit of coffee dyed paper. That's what it feels like anyway. Let's pop that down in the middle. Now, um, the thing I don't usually do um, with tags is I don't normally punch the hole or the slot in the top until I know what journal it's going into, because that will dictate. Like, um, if I punch a round hole and I want a piece of wide ribbon into it, then the wide ribbon's not going to go through there. But if I punch a slot and I want to put twine or rope through it, then, of course, I've got a slot and I haven't got a hole in it. Right, I do feel this needs a little something down here. Just to finish us off, what would you be if you were coming in down there? That feels like it needs something that's a shape. That's just too white. I have nothing against the colour white. That's quite cute. I'm not even going to pretend to ask whether that's that's a label, because I'm not I'm not gonna fight with it. I'm just gonna stick it down. It doesn't feel like it's a label, so I think I'll be okay. A little bit of that by there. Quick around the edges with a bit of this. Oh, it's getting dark out there again. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon and already it's getting dark. Right, so I said we'll look at everything afterwards, guys, at the end. So, right, we're down to these two. This one is lovely and I think it just needs a something there. What is that something? I'll just put this one by and I'll just pull it back out again. That's not it. I wonder whether it's a number it needs. Actually, that looks like it leads a label. Right, this says insects. And if I do that and put a butterfly on here, then we've got insects. Oops, let me knock that into my trash can. Sorry, rubbish bin. I do apologise, guys. Not that anyone has ever even commented on it, but sometimes I do use a lot of American words. That is because I spent 14 years of my life living and working out of um, America. And actually, for four of those years, Chicago was my home. And I did, I just, you pick up the language, don't you? Right, let's pull out the bigger box of butterflies. These, again, are just, they're, they're just a collection that I've built up over the years. Right, I'd like something with a bit of orange in it, to be honest. I might have just seen something. Is that a sticker? It is a sticker. Is it the right butterfly? It is kind of the right butterfly. However, that looks like a nicer butterfly. It's a bit bright. Bear with me, just doing a last minute check before I decide that the butter this butterfly is the right butterfly. Because it could be that I want something completely different and I just haven't found it yet. Like that little one there is perfect. Now, oops, stuck it to the box. Now, when it comes to fussy cutting butterflies, because this obviously came from a book, I tend to, can you see that there? I tend to not cut the antennae. I will cut that little bit out just before I glue it down. Or if I'm doing it on something where I can draw, I actually, close your eyes if you're squeamish, I cut the antennae off completely and then I'll go in with a fine black marker and I will put that down afterwards. So clean bit of page here. Pop that down there. 
bit of ink around the edge. I'm trying to look and see if I've got a fine marker close to me. Right, I think I've got one over the other side of the room. Yep, just a permanent marker and I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to put two little lines on there. So if someone does look close, they will actually notice that there, there are antennae on them. Or as my friend Gail will call them, antlers. And yes, we've had many and many a laugh about that, haven't we, Gail? So this one feels as if it needs quite a bit of help. I've got all of these pictures. Um, they're from the Tim Holtz collection. I think they're called Photo Booth or something like that. And, and I use them for doing ID cards. And I'm wondering whether there's... Well, she's a bit of a cutie because I quite like the black and whiteness of that. Black and whiteness, what sort of wording is that? Let's see if I've got a little bit of scrap paper that might make that make sense. I think I'm going to stick this onto here and then cut around it and leave a little border. And then I kind of have an idea because that's fine, but it's it's not fine. I, I feel I want it to be something different to that. And book page is wrong. I could make maybe a little bit of a and that's wrong. The struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. And there's a bit of blue. Right, let's cut this out before I forget my intention. I'm going to reasonably leave an edge on it to start with because I know that if I'm trying to cut close to the photograph, and go back in the scrap drawer. When I've got a large piece, I will never be able to manage it. Right, now I can come in and do a more realistic edge. Am I in shot? I am in shot. Right. A little cuddle on the edge of there. Right, I'm happier with that than I was before. Right, that's wrong and that's wrong. Actually, that doesn't upset me. That looks relatively vintage. I wonder whether I do. I quite like brown and pink and teal together. I think this is too wide. Um, is that guillotine gone? Sorry, I know I've gone all quiet and thoughtful. Let's tear that off there. Right, let's let's start us out. I'm basically doing a kind of a cluster with the photograph as um, the focal point. Right, so that goes across there. That went on there. I'd quite like that bird to be seen, so let's put this down. And I will trim the edges of this off when it's in place. Oh, so I wanted that bird to show. That's straight-ish. This a little bit of a snip. And a little bit of a snip. Right, okay, I'm liking that. 
I'm kind of liking that. And then a little number or something along there. Right, let's take that off there. Sorry, guys. I know this one took a little bit longer than the others. But for some reason, I struggled with this one. Probably because I knew I was trying to do it in a certain time constraint. Right, so I've, I've got the little bird saved. And I want something to go along here that's a little bit of a number. So, and then I think I need something up there as well. So, where's that box with those pieces in it? I had little bits in here and I just spotted whatever this is. I can deal with that. A little bit of an edge. This has almost turned into an ID card, isn't it? This is useless because I've got this out. So I just want something up there. Um, and I don't know what it is. Or do I want something? I do want something up there. Right. Butterfly would be too much. Let me see if there's just something that might have a little splash of colour. I quite like red with this colour group. Or with neutrals. <laughs> Price to $2.50. I don't think that would be right to put that on there. Actually, I don't mind that. It's got a date on it. Let's just put an edge on it before I make a decision. It blends too much into the background. Mm, this is this is not not working for me. See, because that's there, I want to put something there. Arguably, I could put something up there, but. Oh, guys, I'm sorry, I'm struggling with this. Go back to this. I was looking for a little something that's a shape. See, that's the wrong thing because it's the same thing. Well, what are you? No, you're too small. However, what are you? Nope, you're wrong as well. You, however, I might put on there and then cut, cut the edges. Right, we may have found a solution. I do apologise for the procrastination in this programme, viewers. It just happened to me, me having a moment. Right. I don't mind things going off the side. That's never bothered me. Okay, let's give this a bit of an ink and see whether we like it anymore. This is definitely one of those tabs, uh, tags that I would probably add a little something else to. Like, as I've got pink here, I would probably put a pink ribbon in it. I wonder. Sorry, I can't stop fussing now. I'm still, I'm still thinking I want a number somewhere on here. I'm thinking maybe a little number up the side. No, I think you've been patient enough. I think we just need to stop now, says he rooting deeper into the box. Well, is that not just the smallest number I've ever seen? You know, just for giggles, let's just stick this sucker down. 
because if I don't, I may never find it again. This is probably the smallest number I've ever put on anything. And it's not straight, but never mind. Okay, it's done, let's stop. Pins and glues, let's have a quick look at what we did and, and end the video. So, right, we did quite a bit. I'm not, I'm not upset by what we've achieved today. When you reckon I've used up some of my tissue. Get all this out of the way so you don't have to look at it. I can go over there. So, this is the one we were just a little bit unsure about. God, the yellowness of this light really, really changes the colour. The electricity really, um, so the electric light really changes the colour of things. That, I like that one. That was cute. It's a pocket. There still may something go there. May something. I still may put something there. Maybe a butterfly even. That might. When, when you look at the thumbnail, you may find there's a butterfly there. Just to let you know. Pocket. Large journal card. Large journal card. All need backed. Um, I think we're done, guys. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, bit of procrastination in the middle, but you know what? That's life. Um, hopefully this video lighting will be acceptable or I'm going to have to delete the video and redo it again, which I really don't want to do because I want this this one to be done. It was fun. So thank you very much for your patience, guys. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time. Goodbye now.